It's impossible not to talk about the girls in Nigeria. The whole world has embraced the mantra, bring back our girls. But I don't want to engage in rhetorical flourishes. I'd like to make a very concrete suggestion. In 2005, the entire international community through the United Nations embraced a principle called responsibility to protect. It meant that when within a nation state there was evidence of crimes against humanity or war crimes or ethnic cleansing or genocide, then the international community had a responsibility to protect, that is to say a responsibility to intervene, whether it was diplomatic or political or economic or military. And the fact that there were borders to a nation state or there was sovereignty concerned no longer mattered. It was the responsibility of the world to intervene. And in this case, there's no ambiguity because Nigeria has actually asked for help. Now, we've done it before. When the French went into Mali and cleaned out the extremists in the north, it's almost analogous to Boko Haram in Nigeria. And NATO went into Libya when the state was in a case of fratricidal disintegration. And the United Nations actually gave firepower to 3,000 combat peacekeepers in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So why not Nigeria? You could assemble a force, however the United Nations arranges it, and move into northern Nigeria, rescue the girls, and clean out Boko Haram. After all, even Al-Qaeda has called the abduction an atrocity. But you know... As of the taping of this commentary, the case of the Nigerian girls has not been raised once at the Security Council. Oh, they've talked about Ukraine ad nauseum, but the Nigerian girls not once, and Nigeria is on the Security Council. It tells you how the UN feels about women and girls in the crunch. And I shouldn't end this commentary without mentioning the fact that there was an election in South Africa this last week where the African National Congress, Mandela's party, was re-elected with a reduced majority. There's a very interesting piece in the Globe and Mail of Canada this morning by Jeffrey York, the African correspondent, indicating that the ANC lost a lot of votes in the urban centres. That's really... Uh, an interesting signal for the titanic battle that will occur in the elections of 2019. But whatever the outcome, even with the re-election of a corrupt and incompetent president, the focus must continue to be on the rolling out of antiretroviral drugs to make sure that the six million people living with HIV in South Africa have full lives. Nothing can tarnish or compromise that objective. That was last week. I'm Stephen Lewis.